Well, good evening, everyone, and it's that time again, Thursday at 6 p.m. I'm here with my trusty companion, Gerald the Cat, and uh, tonight we've got an absolute showcase of musical talent. Um, it's sadly come to that time of the year, um, the last half of the summer term, the Trinity term, and tonight's concert features our esteemed musicians um, who are sadly leaving the college. And we have a number of performances tonight uh, for you from members of the upper sixth year and some uh, from the fifth year as well. And uh, there's, as you'll see in a few minutes time, we've got an absolute array of musical talent. And all of these peoples really um, are, are, are such a formidable part of the musical scene that we have at the college. Um, they all embrace different aspects of the musical provision and more than anything, actually, um, they have shown a huge amount of dedication, perseverance and support for other younger pupils um, to their to their skill, to their art form. And this is such an invaluable uh, message, I think, for all of our pupils learning music to look up to these pupils who have given so much. And I hope, of course, have enjoyed their musical journeys. Um, it is really it is really testament uh, to their abilities, but their perseverance, their talents, of course, as well, um, that we are able at the college to make the music making that we do. These guys lead. They are they are our captains, effectively, of the musical scene. They lead by example, and they provide wonderful joy and entertainment. Although Gerald's not really agreeing at the moment, but he certainly does. He's wriggling around. I do apologise. Anyway. Just before we have this evening's concert, I've had I've had the opportunity to actually cu catch up with um, three of our upper six musicians. Um, um, We've got Sophia and Abigail, who are who are a bit closer to home in Arding Lion Linfield, I think. And we've also managed to get Alvaro, uh, who is there in Madrid, um, having been there, of course, a really, really sad case. One of our prominent musicians, Alvaro, who flew out actually on the day of Cabaret which was going to be one of his shining lights. So let's start with him, actually, while Alvaro's there. Uh, Alvaro, just give us a quick overview of the instruments you play, first of all. Tell us a bit about what you've played at Arding Lion, what groups you've been in. Right, so I'm primarily a guitar player and uh, also a percussionist for the um, jazz band. So um, guitar-wise, I've played a lot of classical music, and some flamenco as well, on, on top of playing some uh, modern styles such as rock and, you know, um, electric and acoustic guitar in societies like the Rock Society and other independent um, uh, student ensembles. And I have played a little bit of guitar in the jazz band as well. Primarily also I have played the, uh, the drum set in the uh, jazz band. Yeah, as we hear, yeah, as a man of all styles is Mr. Lucky Bari. Let's go quickly over just to the other two girls. Abigail, just give us a quick overview of what you play and what you've done. Mm, I play the violin, the piano and I sing. And over the years, I've been involved in many instrumental groups, including orchestra, string ensemble and quartets as well. And then in singing terms, um, choir, scholar and more recently founded girls choir. Fantastic. And Sophia, last of all, a bit of a so, hybrid for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I play the trumpet um, and I've played in the jazz band, the orchestra, the brass group. Um, and I also used to play in a concert band as well. So, Fantastic. yeah, lots of lots of ensembles. So we've got a real mix here, actually, of three individuals kind of ticking all the boxes. Maybe I planned that. Fear, what's your, what's your, what's been your greatest musical memory? Um, my greatest musical memory, I think, has definitely got to be House Song. Um, I absolutely love the event because I feel like it's such a great event for everyone in the school to participate in. Um, and for me, my personal highlight was that we won it um, as a house two years in a row, um, and I was really lucky enough to conduct the house for both years. Um, and for me, especially for this year, it was such an amazing memory because it was all of us girls, um, the leavers, the upper sixth um, Willow Girls House together. Um, and it was a it was a tough time, but we came out in the end um, and um, won the event. So, yeah, it was just such an amazing memory for me and it will probably stay with me forever. That community spirit is absolutely invaluable, isn't it? For, Definitely. for that. Let's let's go to Abigail. What about for you, Abigail? A musical memory that you'll you'll kind of cherish. There are so many, um, to be honest, over the years. I think the most recent one that will definitely stay with me forever was, was Cabaret. Um, and I think the fact that we were able to perform in such a beautiful venue um, 
and with all of our friends and over the years have that build up towards this final event you know um and I'm sorry Alvaro wasn't there but you were there in spirit as always um and I think also choir tours every year just those sense that sense of community as you said you know building up relationships and rapport with other students from different years um and even though we couldn't find the Thai restaurant in Malta that will stay with me <laughs> yeah that was a bit of a shocker wasn't it when I promised them Thai food on the first night and we sort of couldn't find it um Alvaro are you still with us there can you can you hear me yes. in Madrid yeah amazing let's go to you then just your kind of musical memories what what, what stands out for you well, I mean, it's difficult to pick one single memory, especially when you have been as long as I have there, been uh, been there, at, you know, five years in a row. Yeah. But um, probably the um the the one I probably remember the most is the uh the recent um house ensemble, where we narrowly won the uh, competition, and it was just such an amazing experience to see such a large venue, especially a college community, you know, in one of those rare occasions where everyone's sort of like locked in the same experience and sort of you know participating in the same enterprise and it was just the energy uh, in chapel it was really it was, it was actually really really pleasing to see how everyone sort of cheered on and and, and rose from their seats so that's probably one of the best memories yeah that was that was pretty spine tingling i have to say to embarrass you alvaro and you and your band is sat there as an immensely proud director of music watching the whole school engrossed in what you were doing it was it was phenomenal and um and the same for you girls obviously with the with the house song as well which was a great great performance so we've actually as we've done with other performances we might have a bit of that archive footage uh, just to relive some of those memories a bit later on in the concert let's go um let's just go sort of about the sort of general musical journey what have you enjoyed Sophia about over the sort of five years what what's in, what have you enjoyed about your sort of music over those over that time for me, I think it was definitely being introduced to such a variety of like opportunities and music that I could play here. Um, I think coming from a school where we only really had an orchestra and a choir to going to Arding Live where we had not just an orchestra, but also a concert band, a jazz band, um, a brass ensemble where we play um, sort of contemporary music and also um, baroque style and classical style. So for me, it's just having all these opportunities to play um, not just a wide variety of music, but also to play with um, professionals um, in mm. the music at Arding Live series, and but also playing really amazing places like um, playing in the orchestra concert at St John Smith Square, which is also a massive highlight for me as well. I like, yeah, I was listening to your trumpet playing in that the other the other day. That yeah, it was a great evening that was. It was and uh, let's, let's go to you, Abigail. What what sort of what have you what have you enjoyed? Because obviously you've done the academic side of music as well. But I suppose this is a bit more bit more co curricular. I think the fact that as you said, music is such a diverse discipline. You can choose any kind of path through music that you wish to. And I think working with students of every gender, every age, every background, you know, right from prep school up to the top of senior school, that will always stay with me. And being able to introduce people to music that perhaps they haven't ever heard before, you know, getting to know um, people of specific cultures, you know, understanding where their music comes from. And on the academic side of things, um, getting to know other people's opinions and maybe talk about art and music and culture and philosophy um, and how it's developed over the years. And Alvaro, just for you, I mean, we're going to go around all of you actually for this, but if you had one message for for those peoples at the college about music, what would it be? What would you say to them? What would your advice be? Well, I'd say if, if I was to give one piece of advice, I would have to say the following. Um, as a kid, when I came here and removed, I did have, you know, a lot of passion for music, but I was only interested in, in a very narrow spectrum of popular music uh, without, you know, any knowledge of theory or, or, or any sort of um, willingness to broaden my spectrum. So my advice is to for everyone in the musical community to give a shot to these different uh, sort of styles of music to expose themselves and enrich the, their musical cu culture, you know, exposing themselves to the, the wonderful diversity of music that is you know, that we are exposed to in the musical department. So really try and sort of be nurtured by all of the diversity that the musical department has to give. Great. And what about you, Sophia? Um, I think um, just sort of along the lines of Alvaro's um, message as well, just about taking all the opportunities that you're given. Because I think we're so lucky to be at the school where, like, uh, as a department, you guys um, offer us so many wonderful opportunities that we can participate in. And I think a lot of the time I've actually been surprised to to find myself enjoying them more than I expected to 
um which is like a sad thing for me now because I wish I'd gone into them with more of an open mind but actually mm. I would say to anyone who's joined like do go into all of these um, opportunities with such an open mind because you will find yourself like enjoying them way more than you probably expected to and I think that's yeah. probably helped me on my musical journey especially. Fantastic and finally Abigail some some advice for younger or current students? I think just have fun music is there to be um be a friend of yours you know it's there when you need it most it's something that can take you away from potentially academic studies and it can be um a resort of individual um expression as well as a bit of um fun with your friends you know absolutely i would echo all of those messages and uh, i think sophia you make a very good point um I was walking around the garden the other day and it came up on my Facebook that I'd finished my university exams 10 years ago this week. Wow. I was like, oh, my word. Um, and it's you look. But the point I suppose I'm making is you look back on things and go, all oh, right, well, this is what I did. Or this is maybe it, hindsight. You know, that phrase is such a wonderful thing. So it's about taking it now, isn't it? You know, seize the day and all of that. And that's a really important message for, for everyone. Um, absolutely. And um, let's let's just talk briefly before we get into the concert then about what we're doing, what we're doing post Harding Light. Alvaro, what, what are your plans? Well, at the moment, I am planning to study um, uh, at uni in London, um, not necessarily pursuing a specific music career as such. Um, I'm going down a more economics based route, cool. but I am still going to um, keep music as a prominent part of my life, uh, playing clubs, meeting new musicians, connecting with other people in, in London as well. And, you know, coming very much, if I am invited, which I hope I am, uh, coming back to the college and, you know, being of service when, whenever I can. That would be great, wouldn't it? Music at Arding Line, Mr. Lucky Bari. Yeah, fantastic. And just let's just while you're there, Alvaro, let's have a quick chat about um, your recording as well in lockdown. You've been you've been making an album, haven't you? Oh, yes, I have. I have. Um, I have. I have, I have had for um, I have had a bit of time to sort of, you know, sit down and uh, say things easy without the academic pressures that usually come with the with the diploma or the A-levels. Yeah. So yeah. I have had time to sort of, you know, put, put two microphones together and start sort of, um, uh, you know, putting some, some recording some ideas which I had from way back and uh, sort of, you know, taking them into a more serious project and, you know, and putting them online to see if anyone likes them. So absolutely. There we are. Shout out for you um, and for you. me to you and to the whole community there. Check Alvaro out. I think he's got his own YouTube uh, channel. So check check that out. Um, Sophia, what about you? What are your plans uh, after after? Well, I suppose in, in in well in the next few weeks and then and and years. Um, so I've actually planned to take a gap year. Um, first, um, I actually decided to take that way way before coronavirus even happened. Yeah. So in hindsight, I'm so happy that I've done that. But um, after that, I've um already got a place um for next year to study um sports and exercise sciences at Durham, which I'm really really excited about. Fantastic. Brilliant. And do you have any, what are your plans for the gap year quickly? Um, at the moment, I don't really have that many. Um, yeah. I think just work up until Christmas, um, keep going with the music, um, get some money. And then after Christmas, um, when borders open to countries, then I'm hopefully going to go traveling. So that's the plan. Fantastic. Great. And Abigail, just with for you, what are your plans what, uh, for the near future? So I'm hoping to study music um, in this coming October at Cambridge um, and that's where I hope to be and if all goes well with coronavirus. Yeah fantastic and you've got a place as well to sing in, in the choir there haven't you? In one at of the choirs. Trinity College yes so that will be hopefully an amazing experience um, yes very soon. So for all of I mean I have no doubt for all three of these musicians of course that it's so focal in their lives that they'll keep it going. Um, obviously it's a little bit more direct for someone like Abigail who's um, going off to, to do that as a, as a degree. Um, but nonetheless I, I suppose my last question for all of you is a very open one. Will music stay with you? What do you think? What do you think uh, Sophia? Will music stay with definitely, you? Definitely, definitely. I think it's been a part of my life since I was very very little I mean I started playing the piano when I was four so I've it's been in my life for so long and although I think mainly now sport is a very very big part of my life it's actually so nice to have music as a sort of a breakaway and a, yeah. a respite from all of the sport that I do so yeah it's gonna always hold a special place in my heart we see you in like the Durham Durham University Jazz Band or something like that yes hopefully yeah. that's that that would be the plan Awesome. And how about you, Alvaro? You talked about sort of playing and gigging. Oh, I, I can't see that's going to leave you. 
Well, you know, I mean, I have met a lot of people that, um, uh, especially friends of my dad, who have always played um, instruments and have enjoyed gigging very much. And I've slowly sort of, you know, stopped doing that over the years because of work and other commitments. To them, I say um, that is, you know, purely, you know, a lot, a lot of it is excuses. And there's always time to sort of um, dedicate yourself to, to, to music. So I am going to very much try to um, keep that going in my life for as long as I, I live and enjoy that. Yeah, that's you've taken a mantra from me which is always if there's a way you know if there's a will there's a way there's a way <laughs> to find the time to do it fantastic you've taken the words right out of my mouth Alvaro brilliant and last of all Abigail um of course it will I think that's the that's the short answer I mean I seriously thought about doing architecture as a degree and going down that more sciencey route um and I think I came to a junction and realized you know what right now music is what I want to study um, why not take the opportunity right now um, and that's where I'm hoping to lead my life and you know what see how, see where it goes but I think music will always be part of something that I enjoy part of life brilliant fantastic so uh well there we are they're the thoughts of three of our you know three of our distinguished musicians and and of course you'll see in a few minutes there are many more um, who have made a massive impact uh to the to the musical scene of the college over the last five years so my thanks to obviously Sophia, Abigail and Alvaro for chiming in there and uh, and and giving us their thoughts on their journey but also uh, their future so um it's that time uh, Gerald as you probably saw popped off a minute ago to get himself sorted um so make sure you've got something to eat something to drink and enjoy the next hour or so of music um made maybe but hopefully not as alvaro said there with a potential return to the college uh for the last time uh, in arding light colors so enjoy the next hour or so and we'll see you on the other side <laughs>
And for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities, forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities of Mother Nature's recipes that bring the bare necessities of life. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, I couldn't be fonder of my big home. The bees are buzzing in the tree to make some honey just for me. But you look under the rocks and plants and take a glance at the fancy ants and maybe try a few. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They'll come to you. Right, we are the, um, the, what are we? <laughs> what, what do you mean, what are the happy group? Hello, everybody. We, we are the, uh, the Woodard House, and, uh, house Ensemble. Yeah, is that right? Okay. Gonna be playing some uh, Oasis. Uh, don't look back in anger. Thank you.
I heard you say
Go ahead, throw your rocks at me. Go to a glass house and then take off money. You're no better than me. We both made mistakes, haven't we? I won't undo what I'm doing to sit in judgment of what makes us human. I don't claim to be proud, but my hair won't be hung in shame. I didn't plan it, but the light turned red and I ran it. And I'm still standing. It's not what I want to be out of this right here.
Shut it now, there's no 
What an absolute treat that was for all of us here watching. As you'll see, Gerald's returned pride of place to see all those wonderful performances from what is a very sad time, I suppose, our levers of 2020. Um, and again, I'd just like to start by thanking all of them for their performance tonight. But not only that, their huge dedication over the last five, seven, I think in some cases we're talking about year three. So whatever that is, is that 11 years? A long time. Um, and uh, of course, special thanks uh, again, before I forget, uh, to Mr. Freer, who is, who, who is putting all of this, all of this technical wizardry uh, together. Um, just before we finish, we talked earlier about some of the sad events that have been cancelled by COVID, of course, um, and for many of these guys in the upper six uh, and the fifth year, that was that was going to be a highlight for them. The likes of the Glyndebourne concert, uh, the likes of St. John, uh, sorry, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, for our choir members, um, and then, of course, the Kamem and all the music that goes with that. So um, one one just thing to say before we head off is that we've got um, an Arding Lye College Arts Lockdown series, um, and uh, we are very lucky um, that we've been given permission to re-screen or, or live stream, sorry, the uh, London concert from November. So do tune in Sunday, the Sunday, the 28th of June at 3 p.m. We have a live uh, rerun of that concert. And then we have what I'm calling the Grand Bonanza live on Thursday, the 2nd of July. Uh, Gerald's getting a bit re uh, restless here, and I think that's because he knows he's getting a friend. Uh, so for that concert, he might be joined by another another feline friend uh, who will be introduced into the music department as another mascot. However, Thursday, the 2nd of July, we have our final concert of term, this grand bonanza where we've got all these different ensembles playing. So that's it for now. Uh, as usual, the virus is dwindling, I think it's safe to say. We are being allowed to social distance uh, a little bit more frequently uh, and we're allowed to see each other, of course. However, Boris is still not taking my mantra. Be safe, keep safe, stay safe. Bye for now.